if you can just keep going and try and find something that you are slightly interested in, the doors will keep opening. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Aileen. Today is the second episode in our community series where we share stories from real Lavi loves on their journeys to creating their dream life. Today, we're talking to a product designer who spent some years feeling lost and floating through life until she found a career that made her happy and a life full of meaningful connections. Our guest today is Teresa Fong. Teresa is a senior product designer at Skydia, an agency in Tokyo. As a designer, she builds apps and websites, but she most enjoys building community. She manages Creative Tokyo, a community with over 2,800 members connecting and finding friends with similar interests. Before we get started, I'm reminding you that I'll be hosting a free live event on YouTube on March 21st. It'll be the new moon in Aries and the astrological new year as the first day of spring. So I'll be hosting a new moon ritual event that includes guided meditation, journaling, and intention setting. This will kick off a new community program we're launching called the Dream Life Club. To RSVP, go to lavendare.com slash new moon. Hello, Teresa. Welcome to the podcast. How are you feeling? Hi, Eileen. I am so excited and a little bit tired, but I have my coffee, so I'm ready. I am ready. It's 7 a.m. in Japan. so I know. I appreciate you waking up early for this. Um, why don't you start by telling us your story and a little bit about what you do? Of course, I'd love to do that. I'm Teresa. I'm a senior product designer at an agency in Tokyo. And besides building apps and websites and you know the typical things you think of like a designer does, I also build a community here in Tokyo for everyone in the creative scene. And when I say creative, people usually get really nervous and think about like, do I do great art? Like, do I make music? And it's not even just like design as in being really beautiful. It's being creative as in like something you want to do and go for it. And so with this community, I've been able to bring together like an amazing amount of people, like developers to literally musicians, people who want to become a singer in Japan, even though they're from another part of the world. And um, that's something that I want to continue on for 2023. Nice. So let's backtrack a little bit. So where are you from? You're from the States, right? So why did you move to Japan? Yeah, that's a great question. I am... I graduated in 2015 and realized that my, I double majored, one in um, health policy and the other in East Asian studies. And after four years in health, American health policy, I was like, no more. <laughs> like, I really can't do any of this. Um, it, it really is a dumpster fire, isn't it? So I was like, I'm going to take a one year break and come to Japan on the JET program to teach English and just figure out where I want to do, uh, what I want to do in life a little bit. And uh, that one year became eight years. <laughs> and then wow. it did get accelerated a little bit because of the pandemic. That was like a plus three years sort of thing. But um, yeah, I'm here I am. So you just <laughs> ended up there. But okay, so what about your career as a product designer then? So you're saying you didn't go to school for that? No, no, no. Um, yeah, so how did you fall into that in Japan? <laughs> <laughs> I, I started out with the five years. Well, it was first first year, right? The first year was like, I'm going to actually become an international advisor for study abroad students. Um, I really love my study abroad time in Japan, which is why I came back. Um, I knew there was a JET program. So I was like, I'm going to apply for it. And then I'm going to live in Japan for that one year and help other students do the same and really discover an amazing opportunity to discover themselves. Like the, t the time you take yourself outside of the country is just you, you can't get that, like, especially when you get older. So I was like, I'm going to do this. And then I realized I just don't like working with kids, even though I was teacher for five years. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so I slowly um, started doing a lot of internships. Like it was, I was working with um, a study abroad center. Then it went to more an internship center, but still kind of revolved around students. And then eventually I realized, you know what? I just don't want to do anything with education. Um, I think I want to do something in product management. And so I started researching into that and I got a job offer to become a research manager, like UX research manager. And so because of that, I had to realize what UX was. And then I 
studied that a little more. And then it was either become a product designer or product manager. And the path just opened up to become a product designer. So I went full force and here I am now. (laughs) So for those of you who don't really know, what's the difference between product designer and product manager? Product managers are in charge of the overall development of the app from the beginning of the research to all the way to the end, thinking about KPIs and whether this product has really been uh, successful in, in like with the users. For UX, uh, UX itself, it's more, I would say, less with the data, though you use data to design. Um, but it's more about using um, strategy and the data to create like a wireframe prototype in front of your app. So th- and that's really, really spicy because some people, you know, there are UXR, like UX researchers. They're all about data. But to be very like simple, break it down to like two senses, that's the difference. <laughs> Wait, so the ma- you, you explain the manager and then the, the designer just designs it. Exactly. Yeah. I see. So the manager you're saying takes into account more research data and strategy for like, I guess, building the entire product. Yeah. The product manager is like in the middle of all of these spheres of like the designer, the developer, the data analyst, and they talk to each other and brings all that information to one. Though if you're a really good designer, you do the same thing, which is why I say it's pretty spicy because it's like, right, I feel like some can overlap. Exactly. Exactly. I see. Okay. You should actually have this overlap, but in a small company, you could be all yeah. of them. <laughs> so for you, what was the aha moment where you're like, oh yeah, product design, this is what I want to do? Or or did you, are you still figuring that out? <laughs> That's a good I, I think I am still figuring that out and always fighting with myself. Even just yesterday, I was talking to my partner about like, am I even doing design stuff anymore? <laughs> like, I'm in a small agency. So there are four of us full time. And so I, we have like internal external products, but my time is very much within the internal product. And because of that, I do less design stuff, but I actually don't like to design anyway, like, which is kind of funny. I don't like thinking about the colors, the fonts. Um, it's just not my vibe. Um, but I love thinking about the strategy, but there, there are researchers so these are more ux designers versus ui designers ui is more about the pixels and how beautiful they are and ux is more about how it works like the flow of everything exactly um so you like designing the experience not necessarily like how pretty things look definitely that Mm -hmm. okay interesting in discord when you first messaged me about your story you mentioned how you like floated around life and did a bunch of things I mean, what was your mindset that was guiding you through all of this? Like, were you, is that just the way you go about life or was it really difficult? You know, I'm just trying to get in your head. Like what was happening (laughs) during those years? It was so hard because I graduated and all of my friends were like in corporate jobs and I'm in Japan teaching English. And and not that it's a bad job. It's just like in comparison and you should never compare yourself, but you just do inevitably. I I was like, this is, I just don't feel like I'm good enough. And I feel like I wasted four years of education. And so every year I kept trying to get an internship. So I would get an internship at like, you know, it was first um, a student center. And then another was with like an internship company just to be like, okay, I really didn't like that. Let's try another one. And um, I would, I tell them like, Hey, I'm an unpaid intern. And if you can't do that, don't. Um, but I was able to put myself in that position to because I really needed that experience to know where I was going. And I pushed myself every day to be like, what do I want to do? And um, like I took so many classes like during the pandemic because I was so lost. And um, yeah, so I really was floating. I had no idea what I was doing. So I was taking courses in like SEO um, and product management. Like it was all these random classes until I found like, you know what? I do want to do product design. That is actually a little interesting. And that interest kept me going. Okay. No, I I love hearing your story because I relate to that as well. I spent a few years like floating around, trying things and taking a lot of random courses. Like I also thought that I was going to, I took a human computer interaction (laughs) course, which is similar to like UI UX. 
I was really like, world, what is there? What is it? What is the thing for me? And I, I had to do that, but I think it's necessary, right? So what, what have you learned in your journey going through all those different things? But I think the main lesson is that like, if you can just keep going and try and find something that you are slightly interested in, the doors will keep opening. Like, don't give up. Um, I remember during the pandemic, like I, I knew my contract was going to get closed or not closed, like taken away from me. And I knew I'd somehow I'd either have to leave Japan or find a new opportunity. I just kept walking and like crying at the same time. But I just kept like, I live near farm. So I was like, totally okay to brawl in the public. Nobody was going to see me and just being like, what am I doing in life? And, but I was, I just kept walking. So every day I just walked two yeah. hours, just trying to figure that out. Wow. Two hours. Wait, and to be yeah. clear during pandemic, the contract you're talking about, was that English teaching or was that something yeah. else? Oh, it was the English okay. teaching one. So all of your product design experience, it came after that? It came after that. Yeah. Oh, so it's very so recent. My, mm-hmm, it's my third year. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. So how do you feel now with where you are at? I feel really, really good, but um, good in the sense that like I have a really good foundation. There's still so much to learn. Um, I have my full-time job, but I'm also freelancing because there's just like, there's a whole other sphere. Like there are so many frameworks that you can learn to improve products that like, I still have notes. I still actually go back and like review these notes before I do a workshop to make sure that I'm actually saying something that's not too um, wrong. <laughs> I, I know if they say wrong things all the time. So as long as it's not 100% wrong, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> no, I, anyway, going back like I to what you said, you said something like, the more you keep walking, the more doors will open for you. And I, I see that in your life. Like you d- never planned to become a product designer. You never planned to like host workshops or do any of these things. And now like the opportunities are are coming. Let's talk about your workshop. So what are the, what's this new opportunity that you have now that you're working on? Yeah. So um, these workshops I have in two different functions. One of them is like with my company. So um, like with actual like clients and big, you know, companies, stakeholders. Um, But the other is just more uh, for the community. And um, the one that's coming up, I think, is like March 8th for International Women's Day. And it's going to be run with other um, community central around um, like empowering women. And um, I decided to make it quite fun. We're going to do it at WeWork. So there's going to be free beer and uh, I think wine. So um, with that, we're having a workshop. Uh, well, I'm going to run this workshop using a product framework. So this product framework is usually for um, like stakeholders to figure out where they want their products to be. Like, how do they want their products to help their users? But it's going to be opposite. I'm going to use it on the end of like the the audience. They are the product. They have to think about themselves in the third person and talk about like how they will help whoever. So it's, I I told them to either frame it. I'm going to tell them to either frame it in terms of um, helping a company. So this is their career plans or helping themselves. Like this is their personal plan and then uh, go from there. (laughs) And I say that with a question mark because it's my first time doing it. So I'm really excited to uh, do that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and, And for the listeners to be clear, this is her, you're calling it your design your life workshop, right? Oh yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I have to make it clear that that's the point of the workshop. Um, but anyway, go in, like, why don't you explain to us? I know you said there's a lot of different frameworks for product design, but explain the one you're using or that you typically use for product design and then how you're applying that framework for life, like personal life. Yeah. So the one I'm going to use is called the value proposition canvas. And I like that probably the most because it's so simple. And if you Google it, you will see some really pretty pictures um, for the canvas. So it's easy to use as well. And it's basically um, two different boxes. The one box is the customer and one box is the product. And the customer, there are three sections. The first section is the customer's job. Like what do they need to get done? And, you know, theoretically, they're going to eventually use your product to get their job done. And then what is their pain point and what is something they need to gain through this process, like the benefits. 
And on the Apple side, it's literally something, it's, it's just the opposite of what the customers um, need. So the, the, it's the product, it's the job they, they will help get done. They're, they're pain relievers. So what kind of things they will do to relieve the pain of the customers? And then what are some pain create, uh, sorry, not pain, gain creators? So what are some benefits from um, using that product and what gains will happen from that? So um, I'm going to use this for the audience because it's very simple. It's like, I guess, six steps and we only have 30 minutes. So it's a very, very short workshop. Usually my discovery workshops are like five hours long. So oh, wow. it's, yeah, this is going to be really quick. I'm going to print out a worksheet and like, um, hopefully they can take it home and think about it more. There are a lot of questions that I uh, put on there. I think, I think it's kind of similar to your um, journal. I would say there are a lot of like discovery questions, like making them think about the future and, um, and not going to lie, your, your journal has inspired me <laughs> to kind of create this workshop because it is very similar in the sense of like discovering where you want to be in the future. Yeah. Um, so I understand how like between a product and the user, there has to be the, like what you were explaining, like there's a match, like the customer needs something that the product provides a solution. This, the customer has a pain point, the product, you know, relieves the pain point, but like, I want you to treat our listeners like your workshop attendees. Like, how would you teach them how to apply the, you know, the opposite of your product design process to life? Yeah, so I haven't run this yet. So forgive me if it's a little bit jumbled. Um, but how I'm going to ask the attendees to, uh, to start is to think about themselves as um, an object, the product. So they have to be very objective and think about themselves as third person, essentially. So if it was me, I'd say, well, Teresa um, likes to manage stuff, but she also likes to design stuff, um, kind of general like that. And start putting themselves in a separate room, viewing themselves their entire life from that perspective. And then walk through first defining, do they want to think about their personal life or their career? And because for personal, like I, we have very different goals and some people aren't actually career oriented, which is totally fine. So that's why this workshop is a bit vague. Um, we're going to divide into two like that. And then after the next part is asking themselves questions about who they are, because we want to figure out the persona, the persona being like, the general population of the target audience that you want to hit. And so in this case, it's probably going to be about the company you want to join or the future person you want to become. Mm. So a little complicated, but <laughs> from that third person, you're going to start asking yourself like, well, what does Teresa, like where does her mind go to when she's not thinking about anything like when her mind drifts like what does she think about and also like does Teresa like to like jump around to multiple projects and start asking them her themselves these questions about like in a state of like nothingness what do they prefer because then this tells you exactly are you a type of person who likes to do a lot multiple projects for example if it's multiple projects maybe a startup would be great um but if your mind drifts and you just really like you're thinking about Australia maybe you want to focus on like getting to that place and then continuing to figure out what is your, the benefits that you create, like, and how you think about that is maybe when was the last time someone thanked you and why did that person thank you? And I think that's a great way to think about like what are benefits that you bring to the other people's lives. And then the next is pain was a game creators. Like why do people come to you? Think about all the times, like, is there a theme between that? And then eventually you will get a vague sense. You're the product and the product solves a problem for someone else. So for, for example, if this is career oriented, it's like, what do you bring to the table to solve this company's problem? Like what? And then in those questions you prompt is like trying to find, figure out this person's like natural strengths or you know, things like that, right? It's, it's all figuring out where you fit because you have something to offer that, is a perfect fit for something in the world, whether it's a company or a lifestyle. Um, and it's just a process of like figuring out that fit 
<laughs> That's exactly it. That's exactly <laughs> okay, it. Okay, good. I, I'm happy I got it. <laughs> I'm so glad. Yeah. Last night I was like, I know she's going to ask me about this. So let me start working on, I like made the sheet, the worksheet last night because I I, oh. I knew I had to bring my mind together so I can talk about it a little bit today. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love that because it does relate to the things that we talk about on Lavender. It's kind of like some people, they, you know how people, they try to become what society deems as successful. They're like, oh, my parents or my peers say that this is where I should go. So I'm going to try to fit into that lane or that career path when in reality, you might want to be somewhere else or you might be better fit somewhere else. And so, yeah, life is a, I I guess if you look at it from the product design point of view, like it's a matter of finding like the, they call it product to market fit (laughs) (laughs) between you and life or you and a company or you, yeah. I mean, exactly. even in relationships too, right? If you're finding a partner, it's like oh, finding that absolutely. fit. <laughs> exactly. And it's funny. I, I have a partner. We've been together for eight years, but I love to listen to these podcasts about like how to find your partner, especially since Valentine's Day was just a couple of days ago. And uh, it's they're, they were saying like, go on at least two dates. Like, Just do it. There's no spark. And um, I think that's sort of like you and your career. You, you're not like automatically, oh my God, like I'm going to become a designer. You kind of have to just keep going and see like, yeah, like it actually does interest me. Unless, I mean, if you're really lucky and you kind of figure out, yes, I absolutely want to become a designer. It's true. You have to feel it out. Even if something feels good, even if there's a spark, you might try it. And then after like a, a year or something, you're like, oh, actually there's all these things that I don't like about it. So it's kind of like a relationship where you don't know until you keep experiencing and testing it out. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Absolutely. Things will pop up that you don't even understand or that you wouldn't have predicted. Um, yeah, I guess it's yeah. all similar. <laughs> Figuring out what to do with your life, finding a life partner. It's all similar. <laughs> I know. That's why when I created this workshop, I was like, I know it's going to make a little bit it's, it's going to make no sense at first, but it's going to work. It's going to work. <laughs> I see. It. No, I get it. I get what you're trying to do. <laughs> Okay. So Teresa, why don't you tell us about your lifestyle now? Because you're, you're working both full-time and freelance, right? For me to be able to do that, I live by my calendar. (laughs) And so it's like my boss, he hates my calendar because he's deaf. He's not type A. (laughs) I'm very type A. If something happens, it has to be on my calendar. So there are so many parts of your life, you know, from relationships to finance, to social, to your, your own alone time, spiritual. And all of that is on my calendar. So if my partner and I, if I'm like, I want to date with my partner, it has to be on my calendar because more than once I've been like, no, why would I do that? It's my partner. I've double booked. And so our dates unfortunately had to be pushed back a little bit because I had a meeting. Um, so I work full time for like nine to five in the morning. And then after dinner and stuff, I, I, I start working. To clarify, what's the full time and then what's the freelance stuff? The full-time is product design, um, but I work in an agency. So I actually have so many hats. I'm doing like marketing as well, even product management. And my free- freelance is actually um, two of them. One is product design again. Uh, but that one, I I work with a, a scene, like a design lead. And so I learned so much from him, which is why I want to continue that because it's also self-learning. And then after that is um, marketing. And <laughs> I really like writing and SEO and like learning how to capture people through that venue, that area. Mm -hmm. So it's being able to like use different parts of my brain, um, creative strategy um, within a day within like, so I don't do it like every day. So I don't, I don't go crazy (laughs) listening, but uh, it's time boxing, something that you Mm. you really told audience to do. And uh, like my Sunday morning, you know, I I go outside, take my walk and I come back and I do some freelance and that's how it works. I'm very impressed at how much you've been able to like pick up in the past three years. Cause you said this is very pretty recent in the past three years. So what do you think has contributed to your success in like growing this career so fast? I think a lot of people would want to know that. First is luck because I was able to get that offer to tell, to kind of push me in the direction of like learning what UX was. But mm. after it was, um, the, the dirty word networking, right? Mm-hmm. But I like to say making friends. That's why okay. I make it, I'm, I do these community events because it's so much fun to meet people from different avenues. Like I would have never done SEO marketing 
if I've never met someone actually doing that. And Mm. um, I've always been really interested in writing and like perfecting words. And so that was just like a perfect way for me to stumble into this and actually enjoy doing this every single day. And so if you want to do something like this, I really, really suggest you to go out and like find either an internship, um, but, you know, some people can't do that or like start freelancing themselves by like just telling people, yeah, like I'm open to help like do an article a day or an article a month or whatever. And um, that's what I told my friends. And eventually they um, came back to me and saying, hey, like my freelance company is hiring and was able to get these opportunities um, that way. I love that tip. Thanks for sharing. Because it is through your networking that you've been able to like hop around and try these different paths. Because I think most people think, oh, you do one thing and then you can only do that, right? Exactly. And you, you can only move up. But it's you can try so a variety of things. And then the key to getting in the door is just by meeting people, like meeting the right people who will be like, here, we have an opportunity. Um, basically the opportunities are out there. You just got to put yourself, let yourself be seen and, and, and look for them. Well, I mean, do you feel like you did more of the looking or did it come to you because you were out there networking? No, I didn't, because I didn't actually know that this is what I want to do in freelance. Like I just put in the universe that I do like this. And um, I started using LinkedIn more actually, because um, I realized, you know, nowadays it's all about social presence and um, sharing what you like, like just simply sharing and not necessarily asking brings back so much like back to you and like not even sharing, but like helping. If you see someone else being like, Hey, like I, I need a designer or like, is this good? <laughs> like, like in terms of design or whatever. And you just like give feedback actually some of my best like freelance designer friends in Tokyo, the way that they get most of their clients is just by giving free feedback. And that one hour feedback has brought them like a a one year contract essentially. Wow. Wow. Those are really good tips. Thanks for sharing. I wanted to ask you earlier, but I didn't get to, but how did you discover Lavendaire and what role did Lavendaire play in your life? I think it was during one of my YouTube binges where I'm like, I am so lost, like help me. <laughs> like, um, I think the algorithm realized like what I was trying to get at. And eventually I don't even remember which was the first one that popped up. It was those like habit making videos. I really needed to start exercising and I was just trying to figure out how to add that into my life. And of course, like this exercise is kind of the keystone habit for everything. And you talk about like really improving your life. And that's what I really needed at that time. I think I discovered you like seven years ago, maybe. And wow. yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> sort of like, and it took a while for me to kind of implement into my own life because I was like, well, I can't do this. Um, I'm just a teacher in, in Japan. I have no idea how to do this. But eventually it became part of it. Like every day that was like personal career motivation you know how someone can be your mentor without them actually knowing you that was sort of the relationship I had with your channel oh wow that's amazing (laughs) and then I I mean I'm curious since you're now in our discord community like what have you found with our community so far I met four other four or three other like um flabby loves in Tokyo so I'm really (gasps) excited we're gonna have lunch that's like, amazing. I, yeah. I feel like it was like an abnormally large amount of people from Japan. I don't know. I'm not sure if there were more people that said they're from Japan, but I just noticed a lot. I mean, there's people from all over the world, but I was I was kind of surprised. I, I'm not going to lie. I did like search like Tokyo, Japan and like ping them. I was like, oh, I, I saw that you're in Tokyo. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people want to come visit Tokyo as well. So I was really excited to like, I was going to actually say, if you're here, like, feel free to pick me and maybe you can grab lunch. Like, <laughs> And since you organize like community events, I feel like it could be like a Tokyo meetup oh in the God, future. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I can see it happening now. <laughs> wow. When you were in Tokyo, I, I so wanted to pay you, but I was like, nah, she's going to be with her friends. Like, why would she? But, I know um, that I, was really rushed because I was there in Asia for a wedding. But oh. it's, but I do, like Japan is one of those places that I'll keep going back to because I love it so much. And yes. <laughs> you know, so, okay. This is giving me more confidence too because sometimes I'm also like, oh, even if I try to do a meetup, who's really going to come? <laughs> who's really going to oh show God. up? Oh my God, pay me. I will help you like do something. No, you're going to have so many. <laughs> See, okay, okay, good to know. Now now I know you in Tokyo. It, yeah, we can make stuff happen. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, Teresa, let's talk more about your journey. So it, looking back, what would you say is like the biggest challenge that you had to overcome? And, and how did you overcome that challenge? I think it was my like lack of confidence um because like uh I don't know if I want to talk about this but I'll bring it up um I have hyperidosis which uh means I think excessive sweating I think the literal Greek term is like overactive sweat or something like that and so my actually my if you look at the videos my hands are completely dry right now but um I didn't that was because I'm using treatment but before I didn't so I was just considered like that really sweaty girl, even my sisters were like, mm. <laughs> and so, I mean, in a, in a, in a lovingly way, you know, right, right. Um, but because of that, I was like, Oh, why would I meet people? Like, I don't want to go out. I was just really uncomfortable, literally in my own skin. And that really affected the way I w- made friendships. So my biggest regret is actually not being able to make good friendships because I just didn't know how. Mm-hmm. And so, and like, it, I think that really correlated with the self, the lack of self-confidence because I just didn't put myself out there t- to help my friends in like, even giving chocolates for Valentine's. Like, I really regret not e- even doing that. Ever since I just like left the house at 21, started living my, by myself and even started doing my treatments and, you know, finding that treatment, I was like like why why am I not going out and meeting people and making friends and like going to lunches and that's the the most important thing in life is just to make connections um and I think that relates to like the whole community bit I love like the discord I love my own like community because it's meeting people making friends and like really finding that connection and um being able to kind of go over that lump has been so so beneficial um, in so many ways in my life. Wow. Amazing. Um, and then what helped you get over that hump to, to start making friends and deeper connections? It's, it's a very slow progress. I don't even know when that started. Um, but I think it was realizing that like, I'm not here to get anything out of our relationship. I just want to give you whatever you need. And, um, and I have to say like, it really, quote unquote blossomed during the pandemic because you are just at home you can't do anything and when you're on these random zoom calls or like just texting friends you just want to make sure they're okay because like they're going through the same thing (laughs) and um yeah (laughs) okay so you started reaching out more mm -hmm. right so yeah I mean I guess lesson in building relationships is like give give first right don't expect anything in return just like be there for people and, and it'll, it will come back to you. Exactly. It always does. It always, yeah. always does. Wow. I like that your theme is kind of about human connection, building community and friendships. Um, when you moved to Japan, was it hard to make friends? Cause I know people worry about that too. They might have this dream. Oh, I want to move somewhere else, but yeah. What are your tips for, for finding friends? Yeah. Um, but I had a lot of trouble because at that time I was just so uncomfortable with myself. Um, but actually I spent a month and a half in Korea last year. Um, I just like packed my bags and went and I was able to make friends quite quickly, like within two weeks, because I was on Facebook pinging everybody like, Hey, um, there's a, there's a really great group called, I think, um, girls international or something like that. And Uh you just put in the country. So it was like Seoul girls international, something like that. And once you join, like there's so many ladies out there who are also like international trying to join, trying to make friends. And so I found really cool people to go hiking with, going to like all those cafes in Korea. Wow. <laughs> Wait, that's like a dream. Okay. You're giving it people inspiration amazing. here. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so yeah, there's all these cute cafes you want to go to, and then you want to meet people to go to these cafes exactly. with, of course. <laughs> wow. Wait, I, okay. You're going to love this. You're going to love this because you're like, you, you're a huge mood girl, vision board person. Yes. Influence. Like, yeah. guess what? That was on my mood board for 2022. <gasps> Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then I, you yeah. just basically like what went into your decision to to actually do it? Were you just like, I'm gonna do it? Because the my borders board? had opened. The oh, so, okay, okay. Actually, no, the borders had like opened they, months before. But right. like the they, they didn't have to do any like testing, um, PCR testing. And I mean I have I'm like four times faxed, but I just have I hate the idea of it going up your nose. So I just wanted to just to be a little easier. And also Tokyo required less paperwork. Um, I think Japan was one of the hardest places to leave and come back in. And so I was, I said, when travel is less paperwork, then I'm going to go travel. And perf- it was like that Saturday they had like gone rid of it. And I had booked it for like that Thursday. So it was perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. Wow. That's so fun. But thanks for giving us those ideas. And also, like, you know, mentioning online, there are so many platforms and resources to like meet people, our Discord being one of them, because <laughs> we have people from all over the world. Um, yeah, love that. Uh, and I'm also curious, are you, do you envision your life staying in Japan? You seem like you really enjoy it. So what is in the future for you? Oh, yes. Everybody asked me that, especially since it's like <laughs> eight years on. <laughs> yeah. Especially my mom. She's like, right. at the end of the day, is like, probably misses you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's been eight years. Um, the answer, and I always say this two more years. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Every year you ask me, I say two and more you, years. You, you have someone, you're, you have a partner, right? Yes. Uh, he's, so, he's American. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. We're both from Boston. Um, mm. But I think this time it really is two more years. Because uh, last year I said three years. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, the actually the end goal is not back to Boston. It's um, to Australia. I'm actually born in Fiji. And I, so I've been in Australia from there. And um, Australia has healthcare, universal healthcare. It has more gun laws. Um, I don't want to take it that direction, but like, it's just a bit safer. I think if I have kids, I, I'd be very much happier to have my kids go to school and, um, and not worry too much. So that's sort of the, the, the plan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and on that note, I was going to ask you like, do you, what is your definition of your dream life and how far along do you feel on that journey? I think it's having the freedom to work and do my hobbies at the t- same time. Um, I'm not necessarily there yet because I, I'm a workaholic. And uh, I, I, so I don't do the hobbies that I want to do. Wait, what are the hobbies that you want to do? I'll define hobbies as things I do to relax. And so that's going to be um, going on walks. I truly love going on walks. Um, that's not for exercise. It's literally something I just love. Like listening to podcasts, like and music anyway um walks and then watching k-dramas like of course (laughs) Mm -hmm. um so right now those are the two hobbies so the k-dramas part is sort of lacking um I don't like sitting down too much so it's sort of hard but like that dream life would be like totally open to just sit on the couch and just watch dramas without like regret is that is that a that's a pretty lame dream life, right? No, What's your dream life? I would no, love I, to know. I, I'm like you can do that dream life now. You're already working, and you can take a break <laughs> to watch a K drama if you want. I can't. I feel no so one's guilty. stopping you. Oh, okay. So it's it's learning to let go of that workaholic guilt, right? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's a journey. It's a journey. It is. It is. Yeah, you say that all the time. It is. It's a journey. Just it's fine. The follow up question was, how far along do you feel on that journey? like towards your dream life? I think it's pretty good. Um, I'm really happy with my job. Uh, like my night, my full-time job, they give me the flexibility to have freelance meetings in the, in the middle of it. And that's something that's so rare. Right. And so I can just push my hours like later on to make sure that everything in my full-time job is finished. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I love learning and I'm able to do all of that. So that's like checked off. Um, but the other portion of like having fun, that's, that's still like, a, that's why I went to Korea actually for a month and a half. I was like, wow, Teresa, you work so much. Let's just get out of here and yeah, have fun. 
And when you came back from Korea, did it change your mindset in any way? Or did you just kind of go back to how you were? No, it did. It did. Because I realized that like, I, I was working at like 120% of everything. My, my calendar was booked. Um, so it was very hard for me to kind of come back to life. It's so crazy because I'm like, oh my God, I have so many lunches. I mean, but it's amazing that I have lunches with people. But mm-hmm. at the same time, you're like, God, I just want to be alone for it right now. I know. So I learned that like, I, I, I'm, I'm going too fast, but I, unfortunately I'm back to 120%. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, girl. Well, I mean, at least you're super productive, but I do hope that you learn to not like just let go of that guilt. That's something that I had to deal with too. I've, I've made a couple of videos about like releasing or detaching my self-worth from productivity. Like I used to be so much more attached to like achieving and the numbers and making sure I'm accomplishing something or being productive. And now I, I feel much more balanced. Like I don't need it to prove my self-worth anymore. And, and it's, it's very internal. So everyone's journey is different, right? But it's possible. I'm here to tell you, you, you're amazing already and you can still achieve great things in life while having time to relax. It's possible. Oh, that's so good. I, I think one of your words was like balance. Um, I think that yeah. was maybe two years ago or something. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, when I, it's pretty funny. You're probably going to cut out all those mistake intros that I did in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> FYI, um, I did quite a lot of mistakes in the beginning. Yeah. Um, but okay. one of them, I try, <laughs> I try to say like, I di- identify myself as a designer. And I, I said that because that's my value. I value myself as a designer, but that's not something I want to do. And, you know, I'm trying to, like you say, like get, you know, disassociate your value with your productivity. Um, but I'm, I'm working on that. (laughs) That's my dream life where I'm like fully able to remove it. Okay. Love it. Um, okay, Teresa, what is something that you would tell your younger self? I would say truly enjoy that five years in that program. (laughs) It was a very easy job. I don't know if I can say that, but that job was not like corporate job. You have responsibilities. They really, I felt like another college, like four year at uni. And so I really wish I took that time to like go to more places in Japan to study Japanese more. I'm not fluent. Um, So, and just like have fun. I feel like I never really have fun. Hence the, do I have hobbies question? Um, So like, and also please work on your relationship. (laughs) Like, like be a good friend. That is a huge regret. Yeah. I I think I can relate to this. It's like something in you was taught to like focus on work and productivity. And it's like you put aside, you sacrifice the fun and the friendships. And yeah, as you get older, you realize like it's not worth it. Like life doesn't have to be lived that way. So there's a better way. I, I really admire you though. Cause like you, you, you were singing and you were doing like movies and it's, you were driving towards that goal that aligned to really what you wanted to do. And I feel like I never was able to do that even in my twenties. Um, so that's been super incredible. Are you, do you feel like you're doing that now though, or you're closer to doing that? Yes. I, I feel like I am fully yeah. like the fact that I can do like marketing as well as design and product management at the same time, like incredibly happy, like yeah, that okay, I have the freedom. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Um, okay. What is one message that you'd like to leave our audience with today? Go out and make friends. And that, that, that term is probably really heavy. Um, so let me just rephrase that. Go out and just text someone if, whether they want to have lunch. It doesn't matter that you didn't talk for like six months. That's actually better because then that lunch will be full of like updates and conversation. Um, it's always fun to grab lunch. And, um, but don't, don't fill your calendar too much with that. <laughs> <laughs> don't overbook your lunches. <laughs> yes, you need please. time for yourself sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. No, I love it. I love that piece of advice because I think it's so important. I I need to take that advice too because I get into my own little introverted hole sometimes. Um, And if, yeah, (laughs) like if there's not like an official event that someone invited me to, I like, I won't see some of my friends, you know? So it's, yeah, I do need to make a little bit more effort in that area. But okay. Lastly, Teresa, where can we find you online? 
Oh, fab. Um, I'm very active on LinkedIn. So go ahead and uh, look up Teresa Fong and I'll be there. I also have a website, TeresaFong.com, but it's not as updated. So probably avoid that. (laughs) No worries. We'll leave everything linked in the show notes down below so you can learn more about Teresa and get connected if you want to. Thank you, Teresa. This was so much fun. I I loved hearing about your story and you're so real. Thank you for your honesty. Thanks, Eileen. And thanks for um, gamaning, as you say in Japanese, bearing with me as I went through that intro. 